Thank you so much for tuning in to Flowing Life, where we love God, love people, and we live life. This is living. Somebody say, I'm leaving familiar. You can put the message title up because I ain't planning on giving it to you that early, but I already gave it to you, so I'm ready to go, and I am charged up, I'm fired up, and I'm ready to release it. Y'all turn with me to Genesis. If y'all ready to go, somebody scream back at me. I know, y'all better talk. Y'all better talk. Walk in the door, ready, <clears throat> ready. If you're streaming online, just put something. I know we can't hear your voice, but put some emojis, throw something in there. Woo! I'm gonna have to pull this mic back a couple times today, I can already tell. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Somebody say, I'm leaving familiar. I'm leaving familiar. Whew. I'm going to make you keep on saying it until you believe it for yourself. <sighs> faith comes by hearing. And sometimes faith comes by you hearing yourself say the very thing that you don't quite yet believe. And the more you keep on saying it, your ears start hearing it. And the more your ears start hearing it, the more you start believing it, and the more you believe it, the more you start saying it, and the more you start saying it, the more you start hearing it, and the more you start hearing it, the more faith you get for it, and the more faith you get for it, the more you start saying it. <sighs> Genesis chapter 12. If y'all can't tell, I had breakfast this morning. I don't normally. <laughs> I don't normally. I had breakfast this morning, so I'm feeling good. Genesis chapter 12. Uh, it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, somebody say, get out. It said, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. Somebody say, leaving familiar. Father, I thank you for this word today. <clears throat> I thank you that we're saying goodbye to comfortable Goodbye to, goodbye to what's convenient, goodbye to what's familiar. Uh, Father, I thank you for every ear that these words will fall on, God, that they won't fall on deaf ears, that, it, that these words will not fall on hard hearts. Father, but I thank you, even as Miss Marjorie said, that change is scary. Woo! Father, I thank you that we'll embrace the pivot. I thank you that we will embrace uh, the new territories that you're bringing us into. Hallelujah. <laughs> if y'all not going to talk to me, I'm going to talk to myself this morning. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you'll do it. Thank you for the supernatural. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, right? Everything comfortable, everything uh, convenient, everything familiar family familiar right get out then he says <clears throat> to a land that i will somebody say i will it's a point of emphasis he says i will show you then he says i will somebody say i will make you a great nation then he says i will somebody say i will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing somebody say i will Bless those who bless you, and somebody say, I will. I will. Curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. There's something in him that obviously cannot come out of him in the familiar place that he's in. There's something in him that won't come out of him until he leaves the land of familiar. He says, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We know Abram. Uh, his name was changed to Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. Had many sons as Father Abraham. I have one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm. And if you are really coordinated, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, turn around, <laughs> sit down. Don't y'all look at me like that. Right? Father Abraham. We're familiar with Father Abraham. The, the man who God chose to bless every generation of the earth, the blessing of Abraham, right? This is who we're talking about. The man who in Hebrews, the hall of fame of faith, the man who against hope still had hope and still believed. 
The same man who God told him to offer up his son and said, you know what? I'm not going to grow weary in this. I'm not going to I'm not going to act like uh, this is a hard thing for me, because I believe that even if you have me kill the thing that you promised me, I believe that you can raise it up from the dead. That Abraham. I'm talking about the same Abraham that said um, this is the same Abraham that said that God is faithful to do. He who promised is also faithful to fulfill it. Right. It's safe to say that Abraham could teach a master class of faith, right? Abraham first comes on the scene, and God says, now the Lord said to Abram, it, this is before his name changed, before the big transition, um, but before all of the amazing, incredible, supernatural things happen. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse them who curses you. Watch this. Up to this point, the only instruction that has been given to Abram, not Abraham yet, the only instruction that has been given to Abram, right? He already has a bunch of things. I will bless you. Um, I will make your name great. I will make you a great nation. Um, um, uh, you should be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, right? He's saying all of the things that he will do. But up to this point, he's only really given him one or two instructions. Up to this point, the only thing that he has told him is somebody say, get out. And he says, go to. He says, I will bless you. I'll make your name great. But first, you got to get out and go to. So maybe you're the person listening this morning and you say, well, Pastor Ty, I'm way out of my comfort zone. I'm way out of convenient. I'm way out of familiar. Like nothing that I'm doing these days even makes sense. I don't, I don't even know what God is doing. All I know is he told me to get out and now I'm out here. Maybe you got out, but did you go? Woo! Woo! Maybe you got out. What if he left the land? What if he left his father's house, right? What if, what if I told my kids, hey, we're going to Disney, and then we leave the house, right, but then we never go anywhere? You think they would be excited about that? But, but, but that you made me a promise that we will go to Disney. You made me a promise that you will bless me. You will make my name great. You will bless those who bless me. You will bring me into a place that I will show you. He says, yes, I will. I didn't just tell you to get out of familiar. I told you to go, right? Maybe it's frustrating because you left comfortable, but you're still looking for convenient. Woo! Maybe you left familiar but you're still looking for comfortable. You're, you're, you're still looking for something that makes you feel at ease. You're, you're reaching for something to grab hold of that maybe still feels like what, what maybe is the norm, what, what, what maybe I'm used to. God, if you could just give me a little crutch to hold on to, then maybe I would feel like I'm okay in this land of unfamiliar. Uh-huh, that part. Maybe you're frustrated because you left comfortable. You left the land of comfortable, but maybe you're still looking for the land of convenient, right? All right, God, I'm outside of what's normal. I'm outside of familiar. All right, I did the thing that you told me to do, but now he's saying, but I told you to go. All right, God, but I can't see nothing. How's it I'm going to go? I don't have my footing. I don't have the finance. I don't have the resources. How am I supposed to go? He said, get out and go. Go to the land that I will show you. He says, I will show you. Um, which means that Abram is going to a place that he doesn't even know when he's going to recognize that he's there. Where will you be when you get where you're going? I know it sounds like a riddle. Where will you be when you get where you're going? All right, well, this is my dream. This is my passion. This is, wh wh where is that place? 
Or does God have you on a route where at this point you kind of like, God, you know what? The dreams that I had, you done kind of completely blown it up. I know you got something bigger, but I don't even know what the end will look like. I don't even know what the, what the big picture, what the grand scheme of things is. He says, go to a place that I will show you. Um, where do you even start when somebody tells you, go to a place that I'm going to show you? Like, I told y'all I'm the type of person, like, I need, when, when I'm following instructions and directions, if, 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 uh, if my wife has instructions somewhere, she knows where we're going, I like to have at least two or three steps in advance. Because what about when you got to make that left turn, but you got a sharp right right after that left? So I got to make sure I'm not in the far left turn. I want to get in the, the second left turn. So I, I want to be in the right position, right? I have to know because I don't want to make that left turn. And now I got to fight through traffic and people getting mad at me because I got to make a last minute. I need, I need at least three steps in advance. He says, go to a place where that I will show you. So this place, I'm not even going to recognize it until, watch this, I'm just walking, walking by faith. I'm just, I, I just keep going. Well, how do I know when I'm there? I, I don't know when I'm there until he gives me a word. Woo. I haven't planned on going here. Where is it? Let me find it real quick. Uh, I'm going to find it. Give, give me one second. Y'all be patient with me. Ooh. Oh, man, this is so good. This is so good. Where is it? Give me a second. I'll come back to it if I can't get it right now. I'm going to come back to it. He says, go to a place that I will show you. Um, here's the harsh reality of... Here's the harsh reality of, of, of what I had to come to grips with, um, is that I have to be okay with not knowing where I'm going. Oh, the ultimate test of trust. Um, so where are we going, God? Um, what are we gonna do when we get there? How do I need to dress for this trip? What do I need to pack in my bag? All right, what, what did Jesus tell the disciples? He said, don't, tell, don't take it pack lightly. <laughs> that sums it up. <laughs> I, I don't want you to take no food with you. You don't need to take your wallet with you. You don't need your identity. Woo! You don't need all the things that you become comfortable with and accustomed to in the land of familiar. He said, don't take nothing because I'm gonna take care of you as you go, right? <clears throat> the scariest part about stepping out into the supernatural, this is heavy right here. Honestly, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Th this part still messes me up even today. Um, actually, let me, let, me, let me set this up by saying this because I, I need you to, 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 to grab hold of what I'm saying. Um, when we were in Richmond, Virginia, and um, God started showing us um, that he was about to shift us. At that point, we did not necessarily know where we were going. There was a certain point where we were just praying about, okay, God, what's that next step? What does it look like? Where are we supposed to go? Are we supposed to stay here? If we stay here, what side of town? Are we supposed to move up a little bit north, a little bit south? Are we supposed to be in another state? Are we supposed to be in another area? We're just praying about God. What are we supposed to be doing right now? Right? Um, we were driving. Some of y'all have heard this story before. Uh, we were driving through Charlotte, uh, coming back from seeing her family in Alabama, and we just so happened to stop at a gas station in Concord, right? Concord. We didn't even pass through uptown. Stopped at a gas station in Concord. I got out the car. First breath I took, and I'm not making this up. First breath I took, I breathed it in, and I was like, whoo. And I looked over at her, and I said, you feel that? And I was like, it's just peaceful. And I couldn't explain it. But she said the same thing. She was just like, yeah. And, and it sounds funny, but I said, man, it's, just, it's, 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 it's in the air. It's just like when I breathe it in, it just feels like peace. I still didn't know that this was the place that God would have us, right? So long story short, we go to our pastors um, and we say, hey, you know, God is dealing with us uh, about ministry. I know he's calling us out. 
um, but we don't really know all the way. And so what they said is, all right, we'll take a trip, walk the land, and see what the Lord leads you to do. We made a trip down here, and God confirmed it on the first trip. We made a second trip down here. God confirmed it on the second trip. We made a third trip. God confirmed it on the third trip. We had no family in Charlotte. We left familiar, right? All of it to come to a place that God would show us. I say all of that to say this. One of the scariest parts about leaving, uh, one of the scariest parts about going into or operating in the supernatural is knowing that you'll never be able to go back to natural. That's the scary part. Because once I step out on faith, it means that I can't go back to what I once knew. I can't go back to what makes me comfortable anymore. Once you have been exposed, it does something to you. Once you see something on another level, that's why some people sometimes you're scared to go drive or test drive your dream car. Because you know once you get into it, I can't go back to my old car now. Now I feel uncomfortable, man. That, this just don't work, man. I, 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 need, I need more. I need something new. That's why some people are scared to tour houses and to go into six, seven, eight bedroom homes. I'm scared of what it's going to do to me. It's going to open me up. And now I'm going to go back to my one bedroom apartment. Now I'm going to go back to my two-bedroom home, right? And, and now I'm going to feel trapped in and closed. And now I, 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 I'm, I'm not ready for that discomfort, right? So let me just stay on the level I am. He says, go to a place that I will show you. I don't even know what it looks like until I see it. Some of you don't even know what you truly desire until you see it. Some people ask you, hey, well, well, what do you want in life? I, honestly, I don't know. Until one day you're watching a video and you see somebody doing something that you have never thought about before. And you say, man, that looks like me. That, that, that's, what I, that's what I want. That's what I desire to do. If you're like me, my wife asked me, hey, what's your dream car? And I'm like, I don't know. Until I saw it one day. I ain't going to tell y'all what it is. Until I saw it one day and I was just like, "Woo, that's it. But the problem is they don't make them anymore. They don't make them anymore. They stopped at 2012. Avalanche. Volkswagen Beetle. If they made a 2023 Avalanche, that would be one of the things for me. I'd be like, babe, I can't go back to, uh, I can't go back to my car. I just don't feel comfortable in this car. That's how uh, sometimes I, 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 uh, I, I try to get some of the things that I want. I say, man, this just this don't feel comfortable anymore. Like these shoes just don't fit no more. I, I, I want something new. Like, oh, it got a little dirt stain on. I guess I need some new ones. Um. You can't go back to comfortable. You can't unsee the supernatural. I'm going to say it again. You cannot unsee the supernatural. Once you step out into the supernatural and you begin to do things where you are fully committed to trusting God, you cannot go back. You can't unsee it. You can't go back to just what feels good and what's comfortable. All right, God, I just want you to treat me like how you used to treat me last year. Last year is gone. All right, God, I, I, just, wanted, I just want you to handle me, you know, how I was before I got married, before, before I had kids, when it was just me and you. Guess what? It's not just you, me and you anymore. Like, we're, we are in a land that is unlike any other space that we've ever been in before. So now we got to trust God in a way that we've never trusted him before. Right. I, I, I need to encourage you this morning. I want to declare over you this morning that you are not just leaving comfortable, but that you are going into a land of your calling, that you are going into the land of healing, that you are going into a land of restoration, that you are going into a land of fulfillment, that you are going into a land of wholeness, that you are going into a, 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 a land of, of, of even mental, of even I want you to be in a space where your mind no longer torments you, where your mind is no longer a jail, to a place where your mind is free. This is going to help somebody this morning. A place where your mind is free to dream, 
When's the last time that you let your mind just run free? Where you let your mind to where you where you let your mind go to a place where you said, I can do anything. I can be anything. I can accomplish anything because Satan would try to limit you right here. Oh, well, you can't do that. You can't go there. You know, you don't look the part. You know, you don't fit the part. You know, you don't have the education. You don't have the diploma. You, you don't have the piece of paper. You know, you don't have the qualifications. You don't have what it takes. And so you never dream it. You never think it. You never allow even your mind to be exposed what God put in you from the beginning. What would have happened if God would have came to Abram and he said, leave your family, leave your father's house, leave familiar because there's something that I put in you that I'm trying to get to every generation of the earth. What would have happened if he would have stayed put? What happens if you decide to stay where you are instead of leaving familiar? What happens if you decide to stay in convenience? What happens if you decide to stay in comfortable? How many other people will not be blessed as a result of your rebellion? Oh, y'all not talking to me. Yes, we're going to call it for what it is. How many people will be cursed as a result of your rebellion? Rebellion is witchcraft. That's what the word of God says. Rebellion is just like witchcraft. What is witchcraft? It's manipulation. It, it is, God, I know what I want your will to be, but I'm going to override your will with my will. Um, God, I know your Holy Spirit is at work, but let me go dabble in some other spirits that can manipulate and do what I desire to do. Right. H how many people how many people will not see um, their purpose fulfilled in life because of your disobedience? Right. Oh, it's really hitting home now. It's really hitting home now. He tells Abram, he says, leave your family. Listen, I'm not telling you to leave your family. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you, uh, you know, I got a brother and I got said they just get on my nerve. Pastor Ty said this morning, leave your family, leave familiar. You got to get out. That, that's not what I'm saying. All right, well, you know, my family, they want me to come to the cookout. They want me to come uh, to, to, to Thanksgiving together. And Pastor Ty told me to leave my family so I can't come see my family. That's not what I'm saying. This is what he says. He says, leave familiar. Leave your father's house. Why do you tell him to leave his father's house? Because his father died. In the verse right before that, it says that your father, your father's dead. Wait a minute. I can't go back to familiar. I can't go back to the way that it was before. I wish my father was here. I wish I could still stay in his house. I wish that he was still providing for me and I could just stay here where I've been for all of these years. But he says, your father's dead. That's a harsh reality. One of our members said it this morning. He said, I've been hiding in the shadows. <laughs> What happens when that shadow is removed? What happens when God calls you out front and center? And he says, now I need you to leave what's been comfortable. Now I need you to step out. Now I need you to mount your platform. I didn't say the platform. I didn't say come up and preach. I ain't say that you're going to be uh, preaching the gospel all over the world, you know, with a mic in your hand. I said mount your platform. He says, Leave. Go to a place that I will show you. Just keep walking. Um, what's the last thing that God told you to do? Woo! Cause I, <laughs> you, better, you better say it, and you better say it out loud so your own ears can hear it so that you can begin to start believing even what you're saying. Listen, whatever the last thing that God has told you to do, I can almost guarantee you that if you ain't done it, it probably ain't changed. Yeah, that's tough. If you've not done it, it's probably not changed yet. Go back to the last. He says, go to a land that I will show you. Ms. Marjorie said this morning, just keep walking. Just keep walking until I tell you to stop. Um, so leave familiar. Leave family. Leave your comfort zone. Leave convenience. All right, I left them, God. <clears throat> so, uh. When, 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 when we going to stop? Oh, this is so good. This is so good. He says, he says, he says, um, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. He says, I will make you a great nation. He says, I will bless you and make your name great and shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Somebody say, I will. 
He says, I will. So even as Abram, I'm sure, it doesn't tell the story of in between of, 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 of all of, of everything. It tells a little bit, but not everything of what happened between him getting out and him actually getting to the land, right? But he says, I will. Which means that even as you're on the way, we're not just stopping in a land because it looks good. Oh, y'all not, y'all not going to talk to me. I'm going to talk to myself this morning. I'm not just stopping at a pit stop and just saying, oh, well, God, this looks like a good camp to set up tent. This looks like a good place for me to set up. Oh, man, this is the perfect conditions for my, for my business to thrive. He says, I will bless you. He says, go to a land that I will show you. Not to a place that you're showing yourself. Not to a place that you're going to claim yourself. Oh, well, I just went out and I said, you know what? I want to start a business, so I just started it. No, but did God tell you to start it? Did God give you the word for it? All right, well, God just told me to go, so I'm going to just keep on going. But are you still sensitive to his voice when he tells you to stop? When he tells you to set up camp? When he tells you, this is the place that I've called you to, but wait a minute, God, this don't look like the right place. Wait a minute, this place don't got nothing. I I was hoping that you would send me to a place that was full of milk and honey. I was hoping to be in a land where the grapes are full. If you read this, you'll, you'll, you'll see that he actually went to the land of Canaan. Woo! This was way before Joshua. This is way before the spies. But at the moment that Abram had got to Canaan, you caught something just now, didn't you? But when Abram was in Canaan, the land was occupied. Abram didn't say, man, you know what? This is a land flowing with milk and honey. I think we can take this land. He said, go to a place that I will show you. He also said um, that, that, that I will make a great name for you, that I put something in you that is going to bring about generations after you. He also told Abram, he said, I will bring your descendants into the land. He didn't tell Abram, I'm going to bring you into the land of milk and honey. Oh, y'all, this is a tough word for y'all this morning. I already know that this is hard to digest because you would like to believe I'm the chosen one in my family. I stand out. I'm the good one. I know God got his hand on me. And so God is going to use me to bring my family into the land of promise. Well, what if God uses you to set up your family for the land of promise? This is tough. This is tough. What if God uses you to set up generations after you for generational wealth and blessings? What if you're the person that, ooh, oh God, it's hard even for me to say it out of my own mouth. Mm. What if you're the person who might not necessarily see the promised land? I oh got, I just know one day you're going to have me in my castle. I already, I already know one day, I told my wife the other day, um, my dream home is a little different from my forever home. These are two different homes. My forever home is a place that I see, all right, man, I'm going to settle down here. This is the place. We're going to pay it off, and our ch- we're going to pass it down to our children. This house is going to be in the family lineage just, uh, you know, for, for years to come. It's a place where I just kind of want to settle. We're going to live here. We're good. My dream home? Whew. We talking... Dude, I don't know. My elevator might be in my forever home. <laughs> my dream home, um, I need a full court basketball. But the reason why that may not be in my forever home <laughs> is because we, we got to come to terms with this, this part right here. But in my dream home, my dream home is going to have an indoor and an outdoor pool. Right? My my. my my, my dream home might have seven, seven different levels. My dream home might, oh, that's it. My dream home, my dream home won't just have my house, but we'll actually have multiple properties all on one land, right? When we're talking about my dream, my dream home. My dream home might be able to have all of y'all come over and to bring all of your families. We can have seven different family reunions happening all at one time, and none of y'all ever see anybody on the property. Dream home. What if you're the person that God is going to use to initiate the process for generations after you? to be able to walk in the thing that he used you to set up? What if God is using us to break the back of poverty? Oh, my Jesus. Woo! 
What if God would use us to break it so that the generations after us, we've already laid the foundation so now they can build on the foundation that we have laid? Oh, God. <clears throat> I'm not saying that you can't experience God's manifestation while you're alive. I, that is absolutely not what I'm saying. I believe that I will have everything that God has promised me. Here's the hiccup. What has God promised you? Do we know the land that God is bringing us into? Or do we look around at everybody else and say, oh, man, you know what? That land looks good. I believe that I'm going to have that too. Right? No, what has God promised you? What has he put in your hands? He says, go to a land that I will show you. So when I show it to you, it ain't about your preference. When I show it to you, it's not about, oh, well, I wanted it to look like this, God. I, I wanted it to go like this. I, I was hoping that I wouldn't have no neighbors. I was hoping, I, I, I was hoping that I would have somebody to cut my grass. No, he, he says, but I'm taking you to a place that I will show you. Because the place that I will show you, ooh, here's the part about stepping out into the supernatural. Is that you also have to be dependent on the supernatural to sustain you. God, that was a whole mouthful. I know y'all caught it, though. Because when you step out in the supernatural, you step out into faith, then whatever you stepped out on is the thing that sustains you. So if you stepped out on, okay, I will, this is something that I am going to do, then guess what's going to have to sustain you? You're going to have to sustain you because you stepped out on you. You didn't step out on faith. You didn't step out on God. It wasn't a word that you stepped out on. When you step out on a word from God, then you always got something to come back to. When we got ready to move to Charlotte, I said, I ain't going down to Charlotte. I love Charlotte. Charlotte is cool. After we took a couple trips, I said, Charlotte is cool, but I'm not stepping out until I have a word. Because I understand we're going to get down to Charlotte, and not if, but when we have days when we start second guessing, like, wait a minute, this don't quite look like the vision you gave us before we left. Wait a minute, we're experiencing some hardships, and I, I didn't think that we was going to experience hardship. I just thought that the favor of God was just going to overcome us and everything would be just so smooth that we wouldn't have to worry about a thing. When those days come, guess what? I go back to that word that God gave me before we left. Wait a minute. Before we left, God, you told me that you would sustain me. Before we left, you told us that you would be our provider. Before we left, you told us that you have called us to a people, right, who need to hear a word from us. You told us that you are going to set the captives free. Right. You told us that you would heal and deliver. You told us that you were sending us to a broken people, that you were sending us to a lost people. You told us that you were sending us to a people that needed to be discipled so that they could go back out and disciple. Right. I'm going back to the word that God gave me before we left. So now when it gets shaky, I'm like, no, God, your word will sustain me in a season where I ain't heard nothing in a long time. God's word will sustain you between words. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't I don't know if y'all got that or not. I don't I don't know if y'all got that or not. Woo! He'll give you a word. And you'll be carrying that word. <clears throat> and uh I ain't gonna talk about y'all, I'm gonna talk about me. Uh but over time, you're like, man, God, that that word, man, you spoke that to me a long time ago. I'm like everybody else getting a fresh word, man. I need a fresh word. I need a fresh word for this season. It's new season, new me. It's new year, new me. God, I need a fresh word right now. And, and, and it seems like that word is getting diluted because it was so long ago. And the only reason that it's getting diluted because you stop reminding yourself of that word. Or maybe you've not done it yet. Maybe you've not graduated from the last word that he gave you. Maybe this mic ain't turned up enough. Huh? It, it is on? Okay, just making sure. Maybe you ain't done the last thing that he told you to do, so he's like, I'm going to just keep on saying the same thing, right? Go back to the last word that he gave you. He will sustain you between words. And so if he hasn't given you a new word yet, then that last word should sustain you even in this dry season, even in a barren season, or you might be in a season of manifestation. Don't get it twisted. When the manifestation starts happening, don't think that you got a new word just because you're seeing new things happen. You go back to that same word, the last word that he gave you, because the last word that he gave you is going to be the thing that sustains you even in the blessing. Don't let that blessing go to your head. Don't let that favor go to your head and you start thinking that you're better than you actually are. No, this is the thing that got me here. So this will be the thing that also sustains me. God, if you just give me one word, he said, get out and go. All right, that's all I needed. I'm gone. 
And guess what? I'm going to keep on going until you give me another word. I'm going to keep on going until you pivot. I'm going to keep on going until you change it. And if you have it, then your word will sustain me in and out of season. I'm going to say this last thing, and I'm done. This is what Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning. He said, I'm giving you a land that you won't receive until you leave familiar. Hmm. He said, I'm giving you a land that you won't receive until you leave familiar. This is the second thing that he spoke to me. He said, I'm taking you to a place that you won't recognize until you get there. He said, I'm taking you to a place that you won't recognize until you get there. Um, It's almost like Elijah when there was a famine, and he said, I need you to leave. Um, And then he says, I need you to go to the brook. And there, there I have already commissioned, ordained, I've already set it into motion, your provision. But the provision won't happen until you get there. Not here, God, I just need you to show up. I need you to come to where I am. But where is there? What, what has God spoke to you? What word has he given you? What, where, 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 where has he told you to go? What area in your life has he told you to give energy, to give attention to? Because the provision is there. It is there. And it's not until you leave familiar that he'll show you the place that he had for you all along. Um, I have to end on this note. We had um, went to Disney a couple a couple years ago, right before the pandemic, actually, at the end of 2019. Um, anybody who has children, nieces, nephews, have ever been around a child before, you understand that you can't tell them nothing exciting unless you're about to do it right then and there. Because if you tell them the week before, whew, God forbid, you tell them a month before, they are going to wear you out because they have no context for time, right? And so when you tell them, hey, we're going to Disney next month, next month is tomorrow, right? Hey, where we going? Are we going today? Where we going? Where we going? And, and over time, they just like, man, you know what? I guess we ain't going. I guess we ain't going. I know mommy and daddy made me a promise, but... I mean, daddy must have lied because it ain't happened yet. So what we had to do was we didn't tell um, Taylor. Tyler didn't care at the time, whatever. I said, Tyler, I think we got it on camera. He's like, Tyler, you excited? He said, no. And then he walked away. <laughs> um, Taylor at the time, we didn't tell her until the day before. Not only the day before, but we did not tell her until literally it was the time for us to leave the house and go hop on the plane. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, she would not have been able to handle all of the instructions. She would not have been able to handle the promise had we given it all to her ahead of time. We weren't able to tell her until we were getting ready to leave. Check this. This is how God works, right? Um, We already had all of her bags packed. We had been planning this out for months. She didn't know about it. She wasn't aware. We had already had all the bags packed, all of our bags packed. We had their, um, their juice, their water, their snacks. Um, we had everything in the backpacks that would go on the plane. We had their car seats. I'm telling you, we were going through the airport. All of us were like five bags each, lugging through. We had everything packed. Before we told her, we already had everything prepared. After we had already prepared the promise, then we came back to Taylor And we said, hey, baby, guess what? We are going to Disney. She's like, wait, right now? Right now? Right now? We said, yes, right now, right now. Right now? She said, are you serious? (laughs) Literally, that's what she said. We got it on video. She said, are you serious? We said, yes, right now, right now. We already had everything prepared. So all we needed was her cooperation. Taylor didn't have to book a flight. 
Taylor didn't have to pack her bags. Taylor didn't have to worry about snacks. She didn't have to worry about an itinerary. She didn't have to worry about where we needed to sleep, where we needed to stay. She didn't have to worry about anything at all. All she had to do was say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. It is already prepared, but it's not until we leave familiar that we'll experience the provision that has been there all along. Everybody stand to your feet. I think y'all have taken about as much as y'all can handle for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. Thank you, Lord, for this word today. Yeah, we're leaving familiar. We're leaving familiar. You can just give me a little bit more in the house, just a little bit. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. We're leaving familiar today. We're leaving familiar. I don't care where you are <clears throat> where, right now, whether you're streaming online, whether you're here in the building, um, or even as a metaphor of your life, what space you're in right now, what season of life you're in. Whether you're the person who's struggling to leave familiar or if you're the person that feels like you're left familiar, but you're still looking uh, for some type of convenience. Or if you're the person that's like, man, I ain't looking for comfort. I ain't looking for convenience. I'm just out here. <laughs> I'm just out here trusting God. Matter That could be a t-shirt. I'm just out here trusting God. Uh, wherever you are, I believe that this word was for you today. I believe this word was for us. Somebody say, I'm leaving familiar. Sheesh. That's a tough word. Father, today, I pray over your people. Not that you would make the choice easy. But I thank you that we would not be without your presence. Because even if we have to do hard things, we can do it with your presence. Even if we have to make difficult decisions, we can do it with your presence. Father, I thank you that today that you have given us a word. You have given us a word that will not just sustain us for the now, but that would go with us every step of the way. God, your word will sustain us. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will remain forever. Father, I thank you that your word, as it comes out of your mouth, and as it nourishes the land, that it will not return until you void, until it has done everything that you have spoken for it to do. Let your word sustain us. Father, for the person who feels like maybe they don't have a word for you yet, God, I thank you for this message today in, 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 in perfect timing. Father, for a word through your vessel this morning, a word that will sustain them maybe in a season where they have not been hearing from you, a word that will sustain them when they feel like they have not been hearing clearly, a word that will sustain them maybe where they feel like your voice has been faint. Hallelujah. Bring me up just a little bit more. Father, I thank you for your word today. God, that your word will stand. God, that your word will stand. That your word will will stand god i thank you that even when we don't feel like standing that your word still stands god even when we want to give up that your word still stands when we feel like quitting that your word still stands when things are crumbling around us that your word still stands even when we're looking fear in the face god that we know that your word is backing us your word is our foundation. Woo! Your word is big brother standing behind us ready to fight and take on fear. Oh my God, y'all got to hear what I'm saying this morning. Your word fights for us. Your word stands behind us. Your word even goes before us and establishes our footing even before we take the next step. Your word, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto my feet a light unto my path. I didn't understand it when I was little, but now I understand it. Father, I thank you that you're lighting up our paths. God, I thank you that you are making our way clear. God, I thank you that you are making our, foot, our footing sure. Woo! God, I thank you. 
I thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are making your word a firm foundation in our lives. God, that you give us a desire for your word, a hunger for your word. God, that even as we leave out of this place, God, that we'll grab hold of our Bibles, God, and we'll begin to read like never before. God, that we'll begin to dig like never before. That will come after you like never before. We are leaving familiar and we are digging into your word. Your word will sustain us in and out of season. Your word will sustain us. God, let your word be spoken over us more than the lies. Oh, turn me up a little bit more. Y'all need to hear this. Let the word, let your word be spoken over us louder than the lies. Let your word be louder than deception. Let your word be louder than anxiety. Let your word be louder um, even than the diagnosis. Let your word be louder than what the doctor said. Let your word be louder than what, what, than what manipulators have spoken over our lives. Let your word be louder than the labels. Let your word, let your word, let your word, God, to declare your word over us today. Hallelujah. Your word is the only thing that will stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If we don't have nothing else going with us, God, I thank you that in our bag is your word. Woo! God, we don't need food. We don't need to take our wallet. We don't need the things that, that make us feel comfortable. All we need is your word. God, today we are tucking your word in our hearts. We're meditating on it. God, we live by your word. God, if you don't speak to us, we don't got nothing. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that your word is breathing life to somebody today. God, that your word is bringing about restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only newness of life that we can experience is a result of your word. The calendar year ain't changing us. Your word changes us. The changing of the seasons doesn't change us. Your word changes us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some days we feel good. Some days we don't. But I thank you, God, for your word is consistent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bathe us in your word. Baptize us. Woo-hoo. Baptize us in your word, God. I thank you that today, today, we have not just received your spoken word, Father, but I thank you for a rhema word. I thank you that your words are popping off of these pages. God, that later when we go back to read, God, I thank you that even your Holy Spirit will start to speak to us. Father, I thank you that, that, that the words will jump off the pages and jump into our hearts. God, I thank you that even as we read, that we'll see things that we have never seen before. God, that you'll speak to us in a way that you have never spoken before. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for your word. Your word have I hidden in my heart. Your word is the only thing that keeps me from sin. Oh, my God. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. Your word is the only thing that sustains me when I want to do wrong. Your word is the only thing that keeps me when I want to go back to what's convenient. Your word is the only thing that stabilizes my mind. Your word is the only thing that keeps me when I feel lonely. God, it's your word. Let your word be hidden in my heart. Take this opportunity to open up your mouth. I've been the cheerleader up here for a few minutes, but now I'm giving you an opportunity.
Our online audience, you can jump in too. Hallelujah. That's all we need, God. Woo. Everything else is extra. God, all we need is you. Hallelujah. Woo. Father, I thank you again for your word today. Ah, wait a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Stay with that same, stay with that same, stay with that same music. But I just want you to bring it down a little bit. I believe that God is speaking to some of you right now. We've invited him in. Now I want to give him space to do what he does best. If you want to take a seat, if you want to go grab a pillow and you need to, to get on your knees, if you need to walk the floor, if you need to be still, I just want to give God an opportunity to speak. Woo! If you're streaming online, just create a space. Just create a space. God is speaking.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You can bring it out a little bit. If there is anything, if you know that there is something, there is a stronghold that needs to be broken off of your life this morning, I need you to step out of your seat and come up to the front so that we can pray with you this morning. If you're streaming online, put it in the comments because we're about to pray. And I need you to move quick. If that's you, I need you to move quick. Something is being broken this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. Not by laying on the hands. I'm not going to touch nobody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 One word. One word. One word. One word changes everything. One word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here or even if you're streaming online, I just want you to lift your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Woo! God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Listen. Thus saith the Lord. This morning I have baptized you with my word. My word has washed you, has purged you, and has purified you. You are new. Listen, y'all, I'll be honest with you this morning. I don't even understand completely the next thing that I'm about to say, but I know it by the Spirit. He says, you are not your name. You have gotten so comfortable with people calling your name and so quick to respond every time you hear it. But in the same way that you respond to somebody calling your name in the natural, I'm about to sensitize your ears to hear me call you by the Spirit. And it won't be the name that people call you that you were assigned at birth. I am going to make your ears sensitive to hear you so that you can hear me speak who you are in the spirit. This morning you have been baptized in the word. Now you are able to hear the name that I call you in the spirit. Now when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Because what you hear in the spirit may be contrary to what you have heard for years. But I am speaking and declaring over you who I've created you to be in the spirit. My word has washed away the old. And now I am ready to, oh my God. My word has washed away the old. And now I am ready to introduce the new. I don't want to news nobody with this, but this is how I heard it into the, in the spirit. The spirit of God says, allow me to reintroduce myself. Woo! He says, I washed you with the word this morning, and now you are ready to be introduced to the spirit man that I put on the inside of you from the beginning. Don't you dare for a moment leave out of this place today the same way that you came in. You are not the same. Woo! He says, I'm making, I have now made your ears sensitive to hear who I've called you to be in the spirit. Do not go back to the old label that you have carried for years this is what I hear the Spirit of God saying 
that some of you now, when you hear people say your name, your natural name, it'll almost make your ears tingle almost with discomfort. Because I'm not the person that you once knew. Oh my God, I hope y'all can hear what I'm saying in the spirit. Now when you hear the name that you were assigned at birth, it'll almost make you uncomfortable because you'll know in your spirit that everybody who calls you by that natural name don't know you now by the spirit. If you knew me yesterday, you don't know me at all. If you knew me yesterday, you don't know me at all. Woo! 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 Today I've baptized you in my word. And I'm ready, I'm ready to introduce you to who you have always been in the spirit. But your spirit has been hiding behind your name. Your spirit has been hiding behind the labels, not just negative labels, but labels that you have boxed yourself into because this has been the only thing you've been good at throughout your life. Your spirit has been hiding behind comfort. And your spirit man this morning is screaming out and he's saying, let me loose. Your spirit man will no longer go back to comfortable. Your spirit man knows no limitations and no boundaries. Your spirit man is ready to be unleashed. And it's scary because you don't know your spirit man. You know the natural you that you've become accustomed to throughout the years, but you don't know your spirit man. And this morning he says, let me loose. Father, I thank you for your word that you have declared over your people. I'm not smart enough. I'm not intelligent enough, but your word makes the difference. Thank you for your word today that breaks and destroys the yoke of the enemy. I thank you for your word today that makes the difference. I thank you for your word today that, that purges, that purifies, that baptizes us. I thank you for your word today that is a double-edged sword rightly dividing the soul from spirit i thank you for your word that it is living and that it is active oh god your word is activated in us today oh god we won't let you down we won't let you down hallelujah we are walking in the newness of the spirit in the name of jesus i declare over you amen hallelujah you can return to your seats Good morning, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the service today. In case you missed any part of the message, no worries. All of our messages are archived on our YouTube channel. Feel free to click the channel, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification button so you get all the latest videos that we have as soon as they air. If you are blessed by the message today and you feel led to sow into the ministry, you can do so online on our website or via our cash app. For more information about the upcoming events, please follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram. Feel free to share anything that you've learned today with a friend and invite them to join you next week right here on our live broadcast. Lastly, thank you so much for tuning in to Flow in Life, where we love God, love people, and we live life. This is living.